Hello, everybody. Hello, YouTube. Hello, art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again, Miss M, and I'm back with yet another video. Hopefully, you all are doing great. Hopefully, you all are enjoying the uh, fall season and, you know, the fact that Halloween is tomorrow um and i hope you're enjoying all the spooky things scary movies pumpkin spice flavored everything um at least if you're in the united states it's pumpkin spice flavored everything i don't know if they do that in other places maybe like the united kingdom or anywhere else in europe here every fall we go pumpkin spice crazy i don't understand it I don't know who thought this up. I don't know what kind of marketing stuff that they're doing. I, I, I just don't know. But that's what's going on. Pumpkin spice flavored everything. Oatmeal, cookies, um, nuts, uh, you name it. There's a, you can think of any food stuff available in the store, uh, in an American store anyway. It, there's a good chance that there's a pumpkin spice version of it during this time of the year and some people loves it and some people hates it i don't know how i feel because you know i don't consume it really so uh there you go i guess that is how i feel i <laughs> i'm not into the pumpkin spice that much it's not terrible but it's not you know it would never be my first choice but they even have pumpkin spice coffee they even have pumpkin spice coffee. It doesn't matter what brand or, you know, um, which, which reminds me, y'all, <laughs> it's time. It's time. Fire up your percolator. It's time. <laughs> it's time to have a nice, cozy fall, y'all, cup of coffee, um, because we're going to do it. What are we going to do today? I'm going to speak further about Eyes Wide Shut because I, ever since I watched the movie, I've been thinking about it. Okay, I did this, I did this video over here. Okay, um, Eyes Wide Shut, part one. Why is there so much nudity, sex, and holes in this movie? Uh, and your guys' comments are awesome. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zero in on Need to Know's comment because I th oh, because my brain is scrambled as usual. Um, I'm thinking that need to know is the is the eyes wide shut aficionado. And if it's not you, if it's somebody else, I I apologize. Let me know in the comments if if I got it wrong. If it's not need to know, if it's somebody else, I've been I've been going through it the last couple of days. I got some bad news uh, recently about my job. I don't know if I'm going to have a job next year. Um, so I've just kind of been reeling from that and trying to figure out what to do um other than like just look for a new job which i've already been doing i've been sending out emails and whatever i'm gonna i i, I haven't looked for a job in a while so i'm kind of rusty oh god i don't know i don't know i don't know i'll figure it out um but this this shit blindsided me and again it's everything's still kind of up in the air i'm not sure about anything uh right now but you know it's not looking good but you know that's one thing another thing another damn thing is you saw it in my if you're if you're you know one of my uh regulars you saw my post in the community tab and this this idiot Whoever this is, however they, you know, write their name or pronounce their name, um, some very mean comments under my videos that I reported, as I, as I said here, um, I just couldn't understand any of this. I said, what did I do to this person? I, you know, everything they said was a lie, false. Uh, I don't plagiarize. And they said, what did, what did they say that I use, um copyrighted material and music wait wait a minute i don't do any of that i don't use copyrighted material i you know i told you how warner brothers got me like a couple of times with copyright notices not strikes notices and i've never ever used music in any of my videos it's just me talking it's always just the sound of my voice and so you know this you know ellie may 
clamp it over here is uh, a liar. Um, and I'm not like upset about this. I mean, usually when you get stuff like this, that means you're doing something right. But it was a bit shocking. I couldn't believe that somebody would go to the trouble. And um, I think it was it you need to know. You said you'd look into it, like look at their their channel. I didn't. I I did look at their channel. And like they didn't have any videos or anything. I I yeah need to know it's down here. I'll check it out. Right, need to know. Um, what well, he's uh, need to know said. Well, she's gone, and I couldn't find her channel. I reported her for you know telling lies about me. Uh, just the usual hater that I heard about that every channel that I know has to deal with. Right, right. Need to know. But like, what in the why? Why go to the trouble of being? this way and doing something like this that i don't understand i'll never be able to understand it as long as i live um but you know i like like i always say it takes all kinds of people to make a world and my latest video it's it's bur burly burly three days old eyes wide shut part one it's turning out to be one of my most popular videos it's it's wrecked up the most number of views in the very shortest amount of time uh one thousand 500 views in not even three days it says three days because it, the clock just turned midnight where i am but you know um or is it three days ago no i made this pretty recently but still three days that's a record for me that is a record for me so y'all i hope you fired up the percolator whether you do pumpkin spice or not that's your business um returning viewers thank you for returning new viewers thank you for being new subscribers thank you for subscribing i appreciate it so much oh and i've got a bunch of subscribers now too i've got 890 of you and i think somebody is keeping track of my subscribers in the comments who is it ah yes new york yankees 855 yeah new york yankees it's it was 855 three days ago now it's 890. What did I do right? What did I say in the video? I said, you know, I did a little bit of research on my channel and I found my most popular video, you know, the title features the word hose. So I said, let me try that again. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> and it worked. I'm going to try that again with this video. See if it works again. Shit, why not? You know, don't worry, I'm not peddling filth. I'm just trying to get monetized. That's it. <laughs> I'm going to try something similar. Why is there so much nudity, sex, and hose in this movie? And I mean, hey, if you're here for the hose, that's great. That's great. Just don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Okay? And <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, um, and hit that notification bell. Once again, there's like eight. Then now there's eight hundred and ninety of you. Um, I don't think all of you have hit your notification bell. Go ahead and do that right away. Go so you never miss one of my videos. Why would you ever want to miss this this awesomeness? I mean, really. But uh, <laughs> so today I'm just gonna go through the comments down here. Um, and there, how many of them are there? There's 39. That's not bad. Let me sort them by newest first. And then we'll go down here. Okay, and start with the oldest first of the newest first. Um, and Gershom, eyeballs. Right, Gershom. There's plenty of stuff to look at in this movie, that's for sure. So, uh, New York Yankees 81, like I said, 855 has grown to 890. And all I had to do was, was, you know, make it, make my title sound like there's some, you know, naughty stuff going on in the video. And there isn't. It's just me talking. That's it. I, you don't even get to see Nicole Kidman's butt. Not even, a, not, not one butt. Um, <laughs> Lily, oh, New York Yankees says Lily Sobieski, the daughter character, or the Mandy being sacrificed for Bill being rescued. Oh. I don't think it's Lily Sobieski. I don't think that's the one that allegedly sacrifices herself for Bill. Because Lily Sobieski is like, she's young and she looks kind of young. And the women at the naked party, they're all, I think they're, I think they're all uh, grown up women. They're, they're, and they're all quite tall. They're all like models. Um, and I read something 
recently that said when Stanley was casting for this movie, the naked ladies, he was looking for model types. He was, and I think the, I, the quote is he was looking for Barbie doll type looking women. And they, like I said, they all look like they come from the same cookie cutter. All of the women that you see, including Nicole Kidman. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's Lily Sobieski, but we're going to have to talk about that character eventually. Uh, what, what's his name? Milich's daughter. Um, and so thank you for the comment, New York. And thank you, uh, for the comment, Gershom, as always. Denver Risley or Risley. Um, Denver, thank you so much. I don't know if you guys saw it. It was in my mentions. I, I got a mention thing. And, um, Denver made a video responding to this video, uh, my part one of Eyes Wide Shut. And I was just so over the moon happy when I saw that. Thank you so much, Denver. Uh, it, it was a great video too. You guys go over there, go to Denver's channel and watch it. Okay. Watch it and leave comments and the whole thing. Um, so thank you. Um, thank you, Denver. Teddy bears were invented in 1902. Denver writes, inspired by a hunting trip taken by Theodore Roosevelt, wherein he refused to shoot a bear cub. Good for him. Um, so Napoleon could never have had one. Oh, Okay, um, well, geez, I'm going to have to, like, not that I don't trust you, Denver, but I'm going to have to look that up just for my own curiosity, like, not necessarily teddy bears, because you're right, teddy bears didn't exist before 1902, because Teddy Roosevelt wasn't a person, like, before uh, he was born, and I don't think he was born in the early 19th century. Or no, Napoleon was born in the 18th, the, the latter part of the 18th century. So they for sure didn't have teddy bears back then. So you're right about that. But I want to just um, research like bears or just stuffed animal toys and how long those have been around um, in general. And why possibly Stanley would have given you know, little, little four-year-old Napoleon, a uh, little teddy bear. Um, but you're right. He couldn't have had a teddy bear. Uh, that's not really a deal breaker or anything, but do you think Stanley Kubrick would have missed that? No, I don't. I do not believe that Stanley Kubrick would have missed that. Um, even if he didn't know something, he probably would have been able to look it up and, and find out real quick. Um, so what if he knew, what if he knew it or not? He put it there for a reason. Maybe the anachronism was intentional. The apple isn't missing. They were in the big apple. That's right. New York city. That's what they call it. The big apple. Very, very good. Um, observations, uh, Denver. I don't think the title refers to snakes so much as it means everything is right in front of you, but you're not seeing it. Th okay. All right. Um, you you have a point i don't know if i agree with that 100 percent. i i because of the garden of eden thing i think that somewhere in there are some snakes i just have to either look for them in the movie or or i could be right about my eyes wide shut is about the snakes not having eyelids um but rather the brill that i talked about um but again you you bring up a good point either way Either way, that's a good point. You you continue. The serpent is there. Oh, geez, I just put something else together and I'll shut up. Helen is Napoleon's death. Yeah, the, the island of St. Helena. The teddy bear is Napoleon. Hmm. The consequence for telling Inanna. Uh-huh. Yeah, you got to watch his video. Go to go to his uh, channel. It's right here, Denver Risley. Uh, under my comments, go click on this and go to his channel and watch his latest video. Um, he mentions Inanna and it's very good. And he, he cites a Japanese film that, you know, now that I know about it, Denver, I want to watch it. Um, the teddy bear is Napoleon and the consequence for tell. Okay. Um, you know what else I learned? I, I, I looked a little closer at Napoleon's biography on Wikipedia not only did he die on the island of St. Helena, which if you look it up, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's a, it's a wasteland kind of island. Um, 
it looks like he might have had, <clears throat> or it's it's you know they're just taken as a fact, I guess, that he had an illegitimate child, the legitimate daughter, named. He, it, it in French it's pronounced Hélène, um, but it's spelled H E L E N E. So, but it's so Hélène, Hélène, but in French it would be pronounced Hélène. They don't pronounce the H in French. Um, is Helen does is Helena in the movie? Is she even Bill's real daughter? Is he or you know was was what uh, what's her name Alice? Was she messing around on him? I don't know. I don't know. What'd you think? What'd you think? Tell me what you think about that. Um. So here comes Tankard. Hello, Tankard. Hello, Richard. Uh, he LOL. You beat me to this. So my question, Miss Sam, and anyone who has a thought, who was Napoleon supposed to be? I don't know. I mean, Denver he is. This is compelling. The teddy bear is Napoleon thing. That might be it. But at at at, at this point, I need to watch that movie one more time, and just think about it for a little while more. Is it Bill? I don't know. Bill, see, he's he's um maybe, maybe it's him. Maybe it's somebody that we're not even thinking about yet. I don't know. Like who? Out of the male characters? You know, the teddy bear is Napoleon. Maybe. Bill might be Napoleon. Possibly. Um, I mean, it, it, can it be Ziggler? Could it? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm open to any possibility right now at this point in my study of this film. I don't know. Who could Napoleon be in the movie? Um... I do believe that somebody represents Napoleon. I do believe that somebody represents Napoleon. Is it the teddy bear? Is it Tom Cruise's character? Um, is it his friend, Nick Nightingale? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have to I have to think about this one. Uh, Denver replies to Tankard. I think it's Bill. He has the same situation of being a hick who cannot attain membership into the aristocracy even after becoming emperor that's the thing about bill he's he, he seems like this kind of bumbling character even though he's a very very famous doctor apparently because his clientele is all extremely wealthy people who belong to like this club that uh is is very exclusive as far as like high society uh, he makes house calls like, that's what he even says in the movie. Like, this is, you know, wh why, uh, I think Alice says, like, why do, why do we get invited to this party? This is, uh, Ziegler's, um, Christmas party. And, and Bill says to her, well, this is because I make house calls, you know? Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Something, something strange is going on. But awesome comments, all both of you guys, everybody so far, awesome comments. Thank you. Um, I'm having trouble pronouncing your 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 screen name. Uh, uh two nine three nine. I hope I didn't do too badly. <laughs> um, the this commenter asks, I would love to know who are the two masked in the balcony. Is it Millich? And his daughter, or is it Ziggler and his wife? It's haunting me. Thanks. Ooh, ooh. And of course, the red cloak looks like is Ziggler, but not sure. Please do a video. Thanks. I will eventually do a video about this um, commenter. G. I'll call you G because that's that's the letter in your in your little avatar thing. G. Uh, I don't know. Is it Millich? Hmm. Hmm. I don't think it's Millich or his daughter. Might be Ziggler. Um, it's somebody that we've seen in the movie. It's somebody that we know in the movie. We know their name. We've spoken to the character. It's not Nick Nightingale. He's down there playing his music. A Millich? I don't think so. Probably Ziggler, but... It could be somebody else. It could be Carl. You know, for all we know. You know Carl. 
the the fiance of the woman whose father died and and um bill went to the apartment another very beautiful apartment um and she kissed him and whatever um you know we, we that that the, those people stanley shows us those people for a reason that guy who died the old man his daughter basically makes a pass at bill that he rebuffs and you know we find out she's engaged to some mathematician named carl um maybe it's them maybe they're a part of that you know secret group of people who knows we're gonna have to think about it though we're gonna have to turn this over in our head it's time to make some grilled cheese sandwiches you guys uh rasfan two five four six but thank you g for the comment uh rasfan two five four six that dress kidman dropping off at the beginning of the film looks like it's torn hmm possibly or maybe it's just like at the, i don't know uh, um at the time like late 90s that was the design for a lot of dresses a lot of dresses were cut asymmetrically a lot of them had just like one um strap and like uh the, the again it was just cut diagonally on a diagonal or whatever so that might be what's going on but i'm gonna have to take a closer look so thank you raz fan two five four six i appreciate it tankard hello again tankard uh something to add to the adam and eve story new york is known as the big apple right and thank you tankard and need to know says this that reminds me of the sidelines is lined with casualties who are sipping life casually then gradually become worse don't bite the apple eve empire state of mind by jay-z mm. that is actually very interesting like people don't take jay-z seriously or kanye west for that matter because of all of his antics but they're actually pretty good songwriters um if you've never heard of the song i don't know if i've mentioned it in my videos anymore uh, anymore e ever um check out no church in the wild that's another good one but need to know don't bite the apple eve is new york the apple they're living in the apple which itself symbolizes the knowledge from the fruit from the the, the forbidden tree in the garden of eden mm. I wish I, I mean, I was too busy just trying to process the movie while I was watching it to watch it, you know, very deeply or very closely. So I don't remember any serpents, but I'm going to have to watch it again and keep an eye out for snakes, serpents, reptiles, whatever. So this is all extremely interesting. Thank you both, Tankard and Need to Know. And you you got, you got me thinking about some stuff here, Need to Know, with the Jay-Z quote. So thank you um oh dear tankard says lawyers <laughs> are also known as snakes oh good heavens richland law says just the really devastatingly good ones <laughs> like who who like i i can't think it's like you know when i think of celebrity lawyers i think of gloria allred i think of mark garagos i you know f lee bailey um What's his face? The the one from from the OJ trial, Shapiro. Um, you know, I, are they are they the devastatingly good ones? I don't know. Or maybe it's the ones that we've never heard of. Those are the devastatingly good ones. I don't know. But um, Gershom also replies, deep down, they are good people. <laughs> you know what? It, I I it, you know, lawyers are known as snakes. I suppose so. There is like a whole thing dedicated in comedy to like. You know, lawyers being um, morally dubious or just like, what you know, the trope about the ambulance chaser lawyer. Like most lawyers, the ones that I've met, they just do their job. They they just do their job and, and you know, they decided to study the law because they did want to help people and do some good in this world. So, you know. I suppose that stereotype does come from something, but again, in my own personal like life and experience, I haven't met any snake lawyers. I've most, you know, 
all of them. Yeah, all of them that I've met in my life have been pretty good people. But I know what you're under. I know I understand what you're saying. Uh, Tankard, like we're looking for the snakes in the movie. So Tankard's trying to figure out like where are they? Are there any lawyers in the movie? But you know what? Oh shit! Thank you, Tankard and Richland Law and Gershom. You just made me think of something. Um, we're looking for the snakes, right? Well, Bill Harford in the movie, he's not a lawyer. He's the other profession that is the one that, you know, if you, if you do that for a living, that means you made it. Not necessarily. There's a lot of misinformation about both doctors and lawyers, but uh, Bill Hartford is supposed to be, he's, he's a doctor. Like, that means you, you're somebody if you're a doctor. Not necessarily. But what is the symbol of doctoring? What is the symbol of doctoring? Oh, since we're talking about apples and snakes, what is, what's the saying? An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Okay. That's like, go ahead and think about that one. And also the, um, symbol for, I guess, medicine or the profession of medicine is, what is it called? The caduceus? It's that staff with, with the snakes wound around it. Is, is Bill the snake? Hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know, y'all. Let me know. But awesome. Thank you, guys. You guys gave me a good laugh here with these with this set of comments. You guys are too cute. Um. Oh, it's Richland Law. Wow. I'm going to read all of this. Uh, the snake. Here's Richland Law's comment. The snake is the guardian of knowledge. In Tibetan, uh, they're called Nagas. Many cultures have this understanding, maybe relating to interstellar reptiles. The Garden of Eden is like the first conspiracy theory. The Gnostic belief is that the old man lied to the couple and Jesus appeared in the form of the snake to tell them the truth about eating the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. The old man said it would kill them. The snake said no. It will just remove the veil from your eyes and you'll see. So for that reason, I appreciate the snake. The snake wants us to get smarter. He appeals to our higher nature. The snake wants Daedalus to build better wings, to get out of the trees and build cities. You hit on the question that I was pondering when I saw you were going to work with Eyes Wide Shut, and that is exactly who is the narrator. At first blush, <clears throat> there is not a sense of individualized narrator. We sort of have an omniscient narrator taking us through a series of events. On screen, we have a limited number of characters that could be the point of view of the narrator. Usually the story would integrate or make a hero of the narrator in the case of an unreliable narrator. Kind of like Holden Caulfield and Catcher in the Rye, right? Everybody thinks of him as this great anti-hero. Okay. Let's start with Bill. Bill does tell Alice that he's going to tell her everything that I that happened near the end of the picture. So we could start by assuming that Bill is the narrator. In the story, Bill interacts with many people, all on the border of sexuality. In fact, in his night of adventure, one could say he simply couldn't get laid no matter how he tried. Well, now wait a minute, though. Was he really trying to get laid, though? I don't, I, I'm not convinced. Uh, ritual in law. I'm not convinced he was trying to get laid. He, he, and if, I mean, I think that, that night, what you call the night of adventure, I think that was fueled by vengeance. He was pissed at his wife, at Alice, for lusting after a man other than himself. Um, and that needs to be explored because I think Alice told him that story not necessarily for a good reason. She wanted to make him angry. She wanted to make him jealous. But something about that story and the way she told it. Mm, I, I don't know. But um, he does. is he really trying to get laid? Or is he just like... Is he just angry at her? And he's wandering around and... Whatever. I don't know. I have to look at the movie again. I have to look at the movie again. But uh, Richland Law continues. That might suggest that Bill is the narrator and he's editing the story to make himself not guilty of having a dalliance while still bragging about how many opportunities he had for a sexual encounter. 
Hmm. That's interesting. That is interesting because, you know, th with the subject of infidelity, his friend, Nick Nightingale, who we learn lives in Washington State, not New York, and he has a wife and four kids. The woman who works in the diner right next door to the to the place where he's been playing, um, where Bill sees him first in the movie, like that woman knows where he's staying. That woman knows what hel hotel he's staying at. Like, I mean, really, and what what kind of situation would she know where he, where he's staying when he's in New York? They, you know, they're 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 hooking up, uh, obviously. So Nick, you know, he's a cheater. He's 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 uh, he's a philanderer, um, cheating on his wife, and you know he's got four kids with her. Which again, I'm not really moralizing here, but that tells us something. It tells us Stanley told us that. Nick is getting together with that woman without telling us blatantly. Okay, so that's one thing. But anyway, um, okay, yeah, he, he he's not guilty. So yeah, he the whole story seems. You're right, Richland Law. The, his whole thing and telling uh, his telling Alice everything is like, see, I could have cheated on you too. Like the, a bunch of times, I could have cheated on you, but I didn't. Well, that's the thing with Alice, too. If we're going to believe her story, like, she wanted to cheat, but she didn't. Is it because the naval officer rejected her? Or because she, I mean, she said she would have given up her whole family for one night with that guy. So I don't know. Neither of them is, like, without sin, so to speak. But anyway, by telling the story... That way, Bill could try to even up the score with his wife's story about the naval captain. Yeah, right. A absolutely. Kind of like saying that he too has many temptations and interested potential partners, but that he manages to keep it in his pants and he's faithful or fidelio. Oh. Okay. Now, fidelio, what I found out, it, it's a magazine that was, um, that was um connected somehow to what's his face oh i can't remember his name uh what lyndon larouche okay back in the day in the 70s and it was like a conspiracy theory type magazine i think or you know something along those lines but i don't know whether or not um stanley knew about it or was a subscriber to the magazine i have no idea but fidelio does mean, yeah i think it does mean faithful mm. anyway ziggler if he were the narrator, would have a whole another point of view of the story because he's been pulling the strings on the Hartford marriage for years, getting prescriptions, getting preferential medical care, and possibly running the sex cult, of which Alice is an initiate. Lending a down payment or co-signing for the Hartford's mortgage, participating in the grooming of daughter Helena... This is interesting. Z Ziegler, he, he seems to have like this, what he thinks, what Bill thinks is like a friendship relationship with Ziegler. He's not Ziegler's friend. He's Ziegler's employee. Okay. Um, and you said Alice is an initiate of the sex cult. Maybe, but if she is, you know, she, she was there in the past to fulfill the role that all the other naked ladies we see in the movie are fulfilling which is okay maybe they, i maybe they are initiates but only for the purpose of rendering their services while they're there i don't think they belong to the high 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 class the spec because we don't see any like when we see all the um sexual activity it's being watched by the people in the cloaks they don't remove their cloaks they don't remove their masks um but they're they're being entertained by you know the barbie doll shaped women doing sexual stuff I, that i i found that really interesting so the like i said the fact that those women took off their cloaks and they were bare ass naked that means that they're not the highest high class they're not even really high class. They're just the servants, and that's their service that they render, sexual services. 
and they have to look a certain way to be in the cult but again they only play a, i think they play a very limited role in that cult they're not really in the inner circle like every club organization whatever there's the outer circle of that club and then there's the inner circle okay um and there i don't think they're part of it but you know you're 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 very right about the possibility that ziggler has been a benefactor of some kind to bill and bill's family signing you know co-signing mortgages or or down payments or whatever who the hell knows um and the uh, richland law continues alice is embodied in 10 thousand different women mostly red-headed the women in this film are practically interchangeable yep they're cookie cutters cookie cutters in fact at the morgue it's not clear whether mandy is mandy or one of a million mandys right but i i i why do they have to be red-headed is it like alistair crowley's like scarlet woman or whatever um or you know something else because oh there's a work of art that features um a again denver riley was talking about lilith in his video and i you i don't know who did it was a pre-raphaelite painting and i don't know if it's dante gabrielle rossetti or somebody else i might pause just to show you it's a red-headed woman it, and is she playing with a snake I don't I'm going to have to show you, but this interchangeability seems to say more about men and Bill in particular, leading us to think that Bill narrates is, I mean, what does it say? Because I don't, I'm not one of those people who believes, you know, I'm not a man hater. I respect men. Um, and I don't think that all men are all the same and they're all pigs and they're all jerks and they're all attracted to exactly the same body type and hair color. And, and no, I, no, that's just crazy. Um, but what, like Mandy, Mandy is, is an important character. We don't see a whole bunch of her. We see the scene in the bathroom where she's, um, you know, passed out from doing drugs and, you know, her and, and Victor Ziegler were about to get down, but she, you know, the drugs do a number on her and she passes out. And then the next time we allegedly see her is at the party where she's allegedly, you know, leading Bill around and sacrificing herself for him. But we don't know that it's her. We can't be sure. And then we finally see her dead body. Um, and what you say here, Richland Law, is it could be anybody's body. Any, you know, skinny, red-headed woman. Um, Mandy, if you look at the closely at the article like you pause the movie and read the article about like how they found her dead or whatever she was a miss new york she was a beauty queen and i don't know if i said this in my other video but like beauty queens like miss usa miss america miss universe miss whatever state of the union new york california um and any of them and beauty pageants are serious business. Those women, they're very pretty. And, you know, they're all the same height, the same weight, the same body proportions. This, they all have the same boobs. They all have the same everything. I mean, even the length of their limbs are more or less the same. Just like these women in the movie. Um, but being a beauty queen or being, being a beauty pageant winner is serious business those women train and train and train they they're basically they've turned beauty into an olympic sport and they're always training they're always there's no off season even after like they age out of the beauty competition um thing like the rest of their life they're going to be competing even if they're not in a competition they're going to be competing for whatever it is and again to become a beauty pageant winner especially like a a miss new york or a miss universe or a miss whatever you don't it's not just about being pretty it's also about being educated they all went to college and they all have you know this talent that talent um whatever and mandy after doing whatever and and the thing about beauty pageant winners is that they're not just beautiful they're not just intelligent they're also extremely ambitious 
you don't get that far as a beauty contest winner. Like Miss New, Miss New York, you don't get that far without being extremely ambitious. That means she was, but that's what her ambition led her to, being Victor Ziegler's, like, side piece. And he doesn't even call her his girlfriend. He says, you know, forget about Mandy. She was just a hooker. Okay, and all of that ambition and all of that dedication and, and whatever to, led her to being Victor Ziegler's, not even his side piece, just, just a hoe. Okay. And it led her to doing something like a speedball. That's the kind of drugs that she does. And he, she was doing it right in front of him. You can see the spoon and everything on the table um, next to her in, in, the, in the bathroom, on, on the table next to the couch where she's passed out at the bathroom. And he's aware of her doing those kind of drugs. And he didn't stop her. He didn't care whether or not she was conscious. Um, mm -mm. No, that's just terrible. That's where her ambition led her. To be a servant. To, you know, yeah, a powerful man, but she's trying to kill the pain. She's trying to leave her body astrally um, in order to deal with what her life has become after all of that ambition and all of that work and everything. Um, and I, I'll talk about that more. I, like I said, I think I do not believe that Stanley Kubrick was a misogynist. Uh, I think he loved women and he hated that women had to live this life of just quiet desperation, especially the types of women that we see in this movie. <sighs> you, you, you said a mouthful, Richland Law. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. I'm going to think about this. I really am because there is a lot um, to think about. Um, and again, thank you. Uh, David Gentry. Hello, David Gentry. The apple is a popular misconception about the forbidden fruit that has been perpetuated for hundreds of years by artists and slapdash theologians. There is no biblical evidence that the, uh, that the tree in question, beyond its allegory, was an apple tree. There is more evidence that it was a fig tree, but even that is up for speculation. But I don't think Stanley was splitting hairs with popular, popular culture versus biblical scholarship and had the drama take place in the Big Apple simply to communicate his message rather than to correct popular misconceptions about what the forbidden fruit was in terms of the literal tree. It was, I think it's interesting that Alice is getting unmasked at the very beginning of the film by getting naked. Yes, that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, revealing that she wasn't even wearing underwear to a party where supposedly she didn't know anyone. Oh, do you mean, okay, there's, there's the butt scene in the, in the very beginning. And then there's the scene after that when like Bill's looking for his wallet and she tells him where it is and she's in the bathroom sitting on the can peeing she is wearing underwear um she's not wearing a bra but she's wearing underwear in the dr uh, under the dress that she wears to the ziggler christmas party is just like she, it's a thong it's a thong and like yeah and like and that scene bugged me so much the way she wiped herself uh when she got up from the toilet yes w women we do wipe ourselves when we pee but why the hell would she stand up to do it? And in a dress like that, like, you know, mm -mm, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying like, you know, for practical things and uh, no, absolutely not. Like what is wrong with Alice? Uh, just terrible. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, the wacky tabacky unmasks her later Ooh, in the bedroom scene when they argue and i think she is unmasked one last time with her final declaration at the end of the movie contrast that to her husband dollar bill who has to start donning masks throughout the movie in an effort to understand his wife his own sexuality and the entire world he inhabits as i've mentioned before i've watched eyes wide shut dozens and dozens of times since it was first released is it you dave are you the aficionado? And it just keeps getting deeper and deeper every time I watch it. And yes, Inanna is a subliminal character that runs through the film, especially in the stars used as Christmas decorate. Yeah, those are those are stars of Inanna. Absolutely. Good video, Miss Sam. Thank you, Dave. 
Um, glad you finally decided to watch this film and the connections you're making between uh, Eyes Wide Shut and Napoleon are really fascinating. Take care. Thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate it so much. Also, with the biblical story of Adam and Eve, one of the... What, oh, oh. Uh, one of the popular themes of theologians throughout the century is to tarnish Eve and by proxy all women. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. We're supposed to blame Eve for everything. We're supposed to blame Eve for the pain of childbirth, uh, cramps, PMS, you name it, um, because she tore down a universe by following the serpent. However, Eve was not the head in the garden. Adam was the federal head of the human race at that point, and Adam let this whole thing happen. The Bible says he was with Eve when this whole thing was going down with the serpent. Adam let it happen. To ignore this is the biblical in the biblical text is, in my humble opinion, extremely misogynist. I know. I know. Uh, Adam was more responsible for what happened because he was in charge, right? The fish starts to stink from the head on downward. Isn't that what they say? Uh, the Bible tells us that Eve was deceived, but that Adam was not. This is why it was important for Jesus to be born of a woman, but not a man in Christian doctrine, because the or the original sin nature is passed down genetically by the man, not the woman. Yes, women carry the original sin baggage just like men do, but women do not pass it on to the next generation like men do. I didn't know that. I did not know that. Hence, the virgin birth of Jesus is very important to Christian theology. 99.99% .99 of Christians do not understand this, so it is seldom reported anymore. But if you study the Bible, it's still all there. Wow. That is fascinating. I, I, I've never heard of that, so you just educated me. Um, that is really, really fascinating. That is really... Oh, see, it's it's taught a completely different way. You know, we're, we're supposed to blame you for everything. Um, that is interesting. And you made a comment up here about getting um, the wacky tobacco. So, okay, you guys, I don't know if you're ready for this, but I told you about um, Mandy and her speedball, which is what Ziegler said in the movie, a combination of heroin and coke, and it's injected. Okay, so that's some pretty serious drugs. Uh, Alice keeps her wacky tobacco in the bathroom in the medicine cabinet hello and she keeps it in they don't sell them anymore which is so sad but they used to be like aluminum tins for the bandages um and she keeps her weed in you know the little pouch of the weed itself and the rolling papers and whatever in a little empty tin of bandages and that is her band-aid that is supposed to be what like helps the, soothe her wounds uh, figuratively rather than literally and she keeps it in a in an empty tin of um johnson and johnson bandages now this is how you do symbolism in movies okay johnson and johnson why did stanley pick johnson and johnson he could have picked any other brand of bandages. He could have picked any other product. It didn't have to be an empty bandage tin. It could have been an, an, an empty um, box of, I don't know, Q-tips or, you know, any other empty container with a lid or whatever. Um, no, but he chose Johnson & Johnson. Y'all, this movie is supposed to be about sex allegedly i don't believe it really is but that's what that's the surface narrative um sex cheating on your spouse all that kind of thing and the place where she keeps her where alice keeps her weed is an empty tin of johnson and johnson hello i th are you getting it are you getting it two johnsons okay that's all i'm gonna say let me let me just drop that right now um, maybe that's what I need to put in the title. You two Johnsons and one Alice. I, I, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying the coffee. 
Um, I hope Need to Know is enjoying. Did you say you got a brick of Bustello? I'm going to have to try that stuff. I've never had Bustello. Is it good? Let me know. Um, but thank you so much, Dave. That that was a great comment. Richlin Law, Paths to Go Glory, The Shining, Eyes Wide Shut. Definitely explore the relationship between the elite and those who would, as who would aspire to join them. Okay, Paths of Glory, The Shining, Eyes Wide Shut. <sighs> I gotta watch Paths of Glory. I, fi I finally got around to watching Eyes Wide Shut. I watched Lolita. I watched The Shining. Oh, maybe Paths to Glory should be my next one. Hmm. And Paths to Glory is the one that features, you know, at the time, the future Mrs. Kubrick. So I gotta take, I gotta take a look at that one. Thank you again, Rich Linwall. Uh, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Uh, on a psychological level, physical as well, uh, sex has a lot to do with one person having power over another. Possibly. Uh, power is an important theme in this movie, and it also shows how power and sex influence each other. What's the significance of Alice's red hair? Kidman is usually a blonde. Ah, uh, maybe. Possibly. But maybe that color is subconsciously associated with youth and innocence. Mm. Uh, I beg to differ, <laughs> Stephen. Um, I think it's, in my opinion, you know, just because I'm such an art history nerd, um, look at the Northern Renaissance uh, depictions of the Virgin Mary. If I'm not mistaken, a lot of them have red hair. Frizzy red hair. Uh, just like Nicole Kidman's character in this movie. Look up the Annunciation. Uh, look up. Yeah, look up Annunciation uh, and, and Northern Renaissance. And you'll find the Northern Renaissance masters like oh uh, Jan van Eyck and uh, Melchior. Is it Melchior Broderlam? Or, I, I, I'd have to look them up myself to be sure of the names of the artists. But these, these, these uh, Virgin Marys almost exclusively red-headed i don't know why but they are um but you know you might have a point as well right uh what's the significance of the red hair it is significant because we see it repeated throughout the movie not just with alice but with her daughter helena who i'm questioning whether or not is really bill's daughter at this point um because like i said napoleon had an illegitimate daughter uh Ellen, um, but he did die on Saint Helena. But whatever. So, so Alice, Helena, Mandy, any other redheads? I don't know, but I'll have to look. Those three female characters have red hair, and I don't know if any other ones. But red hair is very significant. Why? It seems to be, you know, because the Northern Europeans during the Northern Renaissance time period so many depictions of the virgin mary is with red hair that means that they thought it meant something good that red hair red hair is rare that's we do know that red red-headed people you know um unless you come from a family of redheads like you don't see them too often and i don't mean people who dye their hair i mean natural redheads uh red hair pale skin either blue or green eyes that's supposed to be like one of the rarest combinations on planet Earth as far as eye color, hair color, whatever. So what is it about red hair? What is it about red hair? I mean, it doesn't like make you, you know, in, in the Stanley universe, it doesn't in, in the universe of this movie, Eyes Wide Shut, having red hair doesn't make you uh, exempt from being abused but something about it something's going on with the red hair so uh you continue interesting how nudity symbolized innocence in some cultures like the greek the story of uh Thryn, and guilt in others one is vulnerable when clothed so some see that vulnerability is purity and others as shameful weakness yeah yeah so i i don't know what I, i'm still not sure what stanley is doing with that but i'm gonna keep thinking about it most buildings in manhattan are heated by steam which usually means radiators sometimes 
they are hidden behind what looks like an air vent that closet in the first shot looks rather small for such a fancy home usually they have a closet the size of an average bedroom but here there's a normal size closet and a bookshelf i've seen columns like that in modern homes and think they look awfully pretentious they do no 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 shade if you have one in your home um but it, they don't always look pretentious but i've seen i've seen houses like that and like the porch there's columns and the the house is obviously trying to look like the white house um or you know a greek temple and it's like why who made this choice but you know it takes all kinds of people to make a world so i'm not going to comment on it uh jrtk1992 you can type sex this isn't tiktok <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank thank you, Stephen, for your comment. I do appreciate it. You, you've you mentioned a good number of in interesting things here. Uh, Kenneth Russell, 1158. I really think that Tom Cruise was miscast in this movie. I think either Richard Gere or even James Spader would have been a better choice. You know what, Kenneth? I can see why you feel that way. I can. I, I do see why you feel that way. But it had to be Tom Cruise because i don't know if anybody could have played you know this bill harford character he's he's a schmuck he's a schmuck and nobody could have played him quite like tom cruise did he needs to come off as a schmuck <laughs> and he does and the character does now i don't know about tom cruise in real life i've heard all kinds of rumors but that's not what i'm here to talk about um he needs to play somebody like this character needs to be somebody who's at the same time very accomplished but also very naive both at the same time i think tom cruise it was the perfect choice for that just like jack nicholson was the perfect choice for um jack torrance and matthew modine was the perfect choice for private joker like you know it like you said richard gear richard gear is like he could never look stupid or, or james spader they're both they have their faces and their whole aura they just look too intelligent tom cruise on the other hand he doesn't look like an idiot but he has like that softness about him that makes him look pliable and i think that's just perfect for this character but you know what maybe there are other actors who could have played the role i don't know i don't know but th thank you for your comment kenneth russell new york yankees 81 hello again what about the names wendy the shining and alice alice in wonderland eyes white sh have in common disney right right also both of these wendy darling and alice what's her name in alice in wonderland they both go on a journey into a place that isn't a part of the real world like wendy goes to neverland and alice like um goes into the looking glass very interesting good point new york yankees uh anno domini 1991 oh yes finally yes finally anno I, it's here where i did it i did it anyway thank you anno um Anno says again, interesting that you said Alice is in her temple, and it reminded me when Christianity was spreading here in Europe, some of those pagan temples were converted into brothels. Well, damn. Um, and I reply, yeah, very good observation. And there's also the issue of ritual prostitution in ancient religions. I am I am fully convinced that Stanley was aware of this. All, what Anno said and what I said down here, there's no doubt in my mind that Stanley knew about this. Uh, Anno also says, uh, all the nudity and sex in the movie uh, that is not exciting in any way reminds me of Pasolini's Salo because it's about people having power over others and abusing that power through sex. Anno Domini told me about this movie, Pasolini's Salo. I still have not watched it. I don't think I can. I watched one clip of it and I said, yeah, no, this is not for me. I can't do this. Um, but I, I did read about the movie and I'm pretty sure 
Again, thank you, Anno, for bringing this up. I'm pretty sure that Stanley knew about it, too. Ah, uh, need to know re replies to Anno. I did find Bill's interaction with Domino a bit exciting. Kind of. Because it was verbal. It was, it was, they were, at least I, I think, um, they were working with their intellect. Uh, she acted more like a girlfriend than a 304. I'm going to sound terribly uh, naive. What's a 304? <laughs> I don't know what a 304 is, but she did. She did. She acted like they were on their first date or something. It was kind of cute. Um, and her roommate. Oh, and the two girls who wanted to take Bill where the rainbow ends. Noala Windsor and the other one. Mm, yeah. The the two girls who wanted to take Bill where the rainbow ends. Again, I think they're hoes. And if you notice, need to know. And Anno and all of you. When Bill gets called away to go to Ziegler's bathroom to tend to Mandy. Those two women, like when he leaves, they look at each other and they are not happy. Not because he got away from them, but basically it seems to me like somebody instructed them to go and flirt with Bill and offer themselves to Bill. They were not there because they found Bill particularly attractive. No, absolutely not. They were doing their job. They were doing the job that they were at that party to do. They were dressed to do the job that they were there to do. Their hair was just garish, especially the one with the enormous poof on the back of her head. No, no, just they, mm -mm. pretty, very pretty, but more hoes, more hoes. Anyway, let me, let me keep it going. Uh, thank you, Anno. Thank you, Need to Know. Uh, Mikey FN A6684. Uh, just stop by to say this is my one and only Kubrick film that I refuse to watch twice. Hell, I wonder if I could handle a Su Serbian film easier. Look up a Serbian film. I'm not going to tell you about it here. Uh, or should I say I felt like I'd watched a Serbian film after my watch of Eyes Wide Shut? Hmm. You make a good point, Mikey. Like, there's something about this movie, just like the end of uh, Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket at the very end just leaves you gutted. You feel like your soul has been ripped out of you at the end of uh, Full Metal Jacket. Eyes Wide Shut has a similar thing going on. There's no resolution. There's no hap uh, pardon the pun, but there's no happy ending at the end of Eyes Wide Shut. There's nothing is resolved. And you're still wondering, like, what the hell did I just watch? What just happened? But yeah, and need to know replies, LOL, I had to rewatch it just so I could make sure that I saw what I thought I saw. Are you talking about Eyes Wide Shut or the Serbian film? Need to know because I refuse to watch the Serbian film and I just for the same reason I refuse to watch the Pasolini movie. I can't. I cannot. Mm -mm, not me. No, no. But thank you both for your comment. Outer Realm says, to your question and your title, quite simply, the writers felt it necessary for the purpose of making the movie they wanted to make. Oh, Lord. Okay, Outer Realm. All right. Do you understand movie making at all? All is in all caps. Oh, that's never a good sign. Um, duh. <laughs> if you don't get it, then it's over your head and probably not your kind of movie. Maybe go see Barbie. No splaining necessary there. Are you sure, Outer Realm? Did you see Barbie? I didn't. I didn't go see Barbie. I'm not much of a movie watcher. I'm just not. I'm very picky and choosy about what I watch and what I don't watch. Um, the the writers felt it necessary for the purpose of making the movie. And I think uh, Outer Realm is responding to my question in my title, why, why there's so much nudity and sex and... Uh, what else did I put up here? Uh, nudity, sex, and hoes in this movie. Um, I I just don't know what to say to this. <laughs> I just don't know what to say to this. Like, mm, 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 uh, outer realm, outer realm. It's over my head. Maybe it is over my head. Maybe it is over my head. 
But, you know, maybe Barbie is over your head, too. Maybe you should take another look at it. You might learn something. You might, hopefully nobody will have to explain anything to you. Um, but need to know replies to Outer Realm. Yeah, you put it quite simply. Uh, perhaps too simplistic. Maybe watch the video before commenting next time. The title question is the theme of the discussion, not a public query. Right? Thank you, need to know. Um, like, like, oh, how do I respond to these things? And, 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 you know, the screamer from earlier today, Lord. Um, X Rusted says, thank you. Thank you, Outer Realm. I still do appreciate the comment. You took the time to do it, so thank you. And need to know, thank you very much for your reply to that comment. Uh, X Rusted says, the biggest reason why ladies don't wear underwear with classy dresses like this, they don't want visible underwear lines. Yeah, I know. I still don't understand. Like, mm, uh, visible bra lines and panty lines are seen as tacky and embarrassing, so they just don't. Yeah, I know. I know. I never understood it, but I do know about that. And yes, the secondary reason is for easy access. And he puts a little wink thing here. And they feel sexy when they know they have the allure of the curve seen under the dress. Possibly. I know. I understand. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm female. I know about women's clothing and undergarments and, and whatever. And, oh, Lord. Uh, you, the, the, men, just thank your lucky stars that you're men and that you are not, because because you're men, you're not required to wear the things or um, suffer the things that women suffer with their clothes and their undergarments. It used to be even worse. 30, 40, 50 years ago, women were more or less required to wear corsets and um, garter belts and, and stuff like that. <sighs> we have progressed, but now, now we don't have the corsets. Now we're expected to uh corset ourselves like the corsets are invisible they're still there but they're invisible they're called diet and exercise all right and ozempic and whatever else that you know diet pills whatever else that women are are expected to consume or do in order to fit a certain aesthetic that's another video for another time. and that. But I will mention that in the course of talking about Eyes Wide Shut. I sure will. But I, I appreciate the comment, X Rusted. I, I always get a kick out of, out of you guys and your comments. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, another comment, Bob Birkins, 6058. Weird. Helena is also the name of the Emperor of Rome, Constantine. Right, um, Bob. I think uh, what you meant to say is that that Helena was uh, Constantine's mother's name. She's the one that converted him to Christianity. Uh, that was, yeah, you're right. Which is interesting. You bring up a good point by bringing up Constantine's mother. Um, is that the Helena that we're supposed to be focused on? Is the island of St. Helena named after uh, Constantine's mother? Did Constantine's mother uh, become a saint after her death? I have to check all of this, but thank you. Thank you. Very good comment, uh, Bob Brickens, 6058. I love it. Um, now, here we go. I'm going to have to take a coffee break before I get into this one, but this is part of the reason I made this video in the first place. Need to know, wants to know, he needs to know. I, I, is, if you're not a he, I, I apologize. But um, need to know, needs to know these questions here in, in, in their comments. So I'm going to address these after my own little coffee break. I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Hello. Hello. I'm back. Um, I had my little coffee. <sighs> and I'm going to address need to know uh, comment. I There's a lot in this comment. I know it doesn't look like, maybe it doesn't look like much, but there's a lot. He has a lot of questions. Um, and by the way, if you're interested, my Spanish class. <laughs> I started it this past week. Woo! Let me tell you, I think so far I'm getting an A, but took my first exam last night. That might change. My A might change to a C very quickly. Who knows? But I have learned a little bit um, right now. It is, let's see, what time is it right now? It's 
una hora y media de la madrugada. Need, uh, anybody, any of you who speak Spanish, did I do that okay? <laughs> let's hope for the best. But now, let's get down to it. Need to know, needs to know um, some stuff. So, some ideas you ask? Yes, I asked for ideas in the video. Okay, there are a few things I want to know more about. Whether, unlike The Shining, the source material should be considered in this one. Traum novel. Ah, probably. Probably, but something is telling me that Stanley is deviating from the source material in Eyes Wide Shut very much the same way that he did in both The Shining and Full Metal Jacket. Um, from what I can gather, Traum, Traum Nobel um, deals with some really pretentious people. And looks like in Eyes Wide Shut we're dealing with some really pretentious people too. And I'm not talking about the masked people at the naked party. I'm talking about Bill and Alice. They think they're really quite something, but are they? Um, so I don't know. I don't know the answer to this first question, but I would think that just like just like Stephen King's book, The Shining, and how much, how drastically Stanley deviated from that. He probably did the same thing with, with Traum Novel. I'm going to have to take a look at that. Of course, I'm eventually going to have to look it up. So thank you. Thank you for bringing it into my mind. I uh, need to know. Uh, why is it that every time right before Bill might get down to business, if you know what I mean, he gets interrupted and called away? I got that one from another analysis of the movie Rob Ager, I think. At this point... This is my initial opinion. It might change in the future, but I think he gets interrupted and called away every time because maybe, possibly, it's not real. It might be a dream sequence, a very extended dream sequence. It might be... That's one possibility. What the stuff that we see happening, including the naked party, maybe never really happened. But his interaction with Ziegler tells us that at least the naked party part of it did happen. I don't know what to think at this point. I don't know what to think. I just don't know. Um, he gets interrupted. I have no idea what Rob Ager has to say about the subject, but something about actually going through with it is, is very, very suspicious. Actually going through with it and like getting down with somebody like Domino or or um you know the dead guy's daughter that that throws herself at him or the two hoochies at at the christmas party or you know and any of it he's not meant to he's not meant to if it's not a dream then him not going through with it for whatever reason he gets interrupted is supposed to maybe show us that he doesn't have that kind of power he doesn't have that that what he thinks he has or what he thinks his money can buy him i don't know and in the case of domino he pays her 150 dollars in the late 90s that was that was much more money than it is now um but he pays her and they don't even do anything which is odd. It's very odd. Um, and the Domino character is kind of tragic because when, he, you know, they're, they're in Domino's bedroom and look around the bedroom that is the bedroom of somebody who's in between being a child and an adult. 
um, that's that's not a grown woman's bedroom. That's like a teenage girl's bedroom, maybe an 18-year-old, 19-year-old. And you see the books in her bedroom. What do you see? Sociology. It's a textbook. She's a college student. You know, but the, I digress. Um, you know, why does he get interrupted? I mean, he, he, he does do it with his wife. He, we, we don't see them doing it, but we see them like getting ready to do it. Um, when she, you know, after the party and she's in the nude and she's looking at herself in the mirror, admiring herself. And then he comes up behind her and the whole, okay. So he does get some in the movie from his wife, but <clears throat> every other instance, oh, either, either he, he doesn't have, you know, he doesn't, he's not who he thinks he is. He's not as awesome as he thinks he is, or he's too clinical. He's too cautious. He's, um, he's not wanton. Okay, and why that might be, I don't know, but he, but he seems like, you know, he almost seems like, um, you know, like, like, like a priest or somebody who's, uh, sworn to, uh, taken a vow of celibacy or something like that. I, I don't know how else to, uh, explain it or characterize it. Something about the Bill Hartford character, which is, like I said, why, it had to be somebody like Tom Cruise to play him. Um, he's, he's not sure of himself, not in that area of life. For whatever reason, he's not sure of himself. He doesn't think of himself as this uh, stud. He just, he doesn't. He thinks of himself as powerful because of all the money he throws around. And if, when the money doesn't work, then he flashes his medical license. His, his, his license to practice medicine. <sighs> kind of like Dale Cooper in um, Twin Peaks, like the his badge as an FBI agent. That's what gets him access into places that in you know he shouldn't have access to, or I don't believe he should have access to. Or people just tell him things, and all he has to say is, oh, I'm a doctor, so it's okay for you to tell me, like, whatever. But when it comes to sexual things, he doesn't have that same kind of confidence. And I don't know why. I don't know why. That's, that's a, that's a, this is a difficult question. That's why I said, need to know is asking some very serious questions that are not easy to answer. That are not easy to answer. Um, and again, maybe in other instances, you get the male perspective of that. And am I giving you the female perspective? I don't know because I'm just one person. I'm just Miss M. There's there's a lot of other women out there who might not feel the same as I do. So there's that. Um, also, need to know wants to know about the rainbow references. Well, going back to the two hoochies um, at the Ziegler Christmas party, they sa he says, "Where are you taking me?" And they say, "To the to the end of the rainbow." Um, well, what's at the end of the rainbow? A pot of gold. His name is Bill, and one of you very astutely called him Dollar Bill, because that's what he does. He flashes those dollars like wherever he goes, um, and pays extra for stuff just to get what he needs in order to like, you know, with Millage, he gives him extra money for the costume so he can go to the, to the forbidden party. Okay, so the gold at the end of the rainbow. It's that. That's the. That's, that's the, um, incentive. That's the motivation for everything. The gold at the end of the rainbow, which is money. That, 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 that's his motivation for everything. Money. And, and the power that he believes comes with money. But we're being shown in, in a sense that no power doesn't come from money. No, not necessarily. Or, you know, the status that he, that he, um, seeks to attain, it doesn't come simply from money. There's, there's more going on. And what is that more? That's what we have to figure out. And I just started with this movie, so. And also Christmas being the time of the year, um, 
Christmas is an interesting holiday, right? They say that it's celebrated at the wrong time of the year. It should be some other time of the year that Jesus was really born in like March or whatever. If, he, oh Lord, please don't hate me for this. But if, if he was born at all, if that's not just a completely uh, and totally fictional character. Or, you know, maybe there was a real person that Jesus is based on, but we don't know who that is. Um, you know, who, what's his face? John the Baptist. Like, what do we know about John the Baptist? Hmm? We don't know nothing. Um, they don't tell us much about John the Baptist. But Christmas is an excuse to spend lots of money. Christmas happens just a couple of days after the winter solstice. That marks the beginning of winter, the December 21st. So four days after December 21st is December 25th. Um, and that seems like a celebration to kick off the winter season. And yeah, you've probably heard of Saturnalia um, uh, or what is it, Yule or, or those other uh, celebrations during that time of the year uh, in the pagan world. Um, something is going on something is going on and wherever he goes people have decorated their homes and whatever for christmas even probably domino right even and he even decorates the his doctor's office with christmas stuff and the the toy store the ziggler's home ziggler's home oddly um again it has the star of inanna there that should tell us something that should tell us something so the elites that bill wants to break into they're holding a christmas party in ziggler's house but do they really believe in the holiday as christmas or do they are they celebrating something much more ancient than christmas i don't know i don't know and of course you want to know who those people were at the Somerton manor event who were they supposed to be the nameless faceless elite that i can be i mean i'm not completely certain but i'm but but i something is telling me the nameless faceless elite we don't know who really runs this world we don't know we think we know because we watch the news and again my viewership y'all are educated people i can tell that from your comments um but even though we keep up try to keep up with stuff with regard to education and and the news current events politics whatever as much as you can like you got to live your life and work and do laundry and go grocery shopping but like you know you try to keep up with what's going on in the world um and and be educated about art and films and culture and whatever we still know nothing we know absolutely nothing the people who run this world they we don't know their names it's not the politicians on tv it's not congress you know the, the senate congress the house of Representatives in the united states it's not the president it's none of those people it's somebody else and i'm not going like deep deep dark conspiracy on you but it's somebody else is it the royals is I don't even think it's the royals to be to to be completely frank, I don't believe it's the royal house of of whatever. Uh, I don't think it's the British royals. I don't think it's the Spanish royals. I don't think it's any other royal family anywhere on planet Earth. I think it's something that's above them. And no, I don't. I'm not talking like David Icke, and you know the reptilians. No, no, no. That's not what I mean. I don't. <laughs> I don't mean that. Um but it 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 the i don't believe that the royals are the top of the food chain i don't believe that they're they're at the top of the food chain the top of the totem pole i believe it's someone or something else what that is i am not sure i'm working on it i sure am i've been working on it for a little while now um i will let you know if I make any progress, but that's who's at the Somerton Manor event. 
And he's te- and Ziggler tells Bill, if you knew who those people were at the party, uh, you wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Why wouldn't you be able to sleep at night if you knew who those people were? Because those people are the ones who make the decisions about how you and I live. And what the quality of our lives is going to be like. Whether or not we get to eat. Whether or not we get to have a job. Whether or not we get to have any money or a place to live. And the price of housing. And the price of uh, gasoline or petrol, as you all call it in in the United Kingdom. Um, Whether or not we in some cases whether or not we you know live or die of not just wars yeah they send people off to fight in wars but also like medical stuff diseases i I, again i'm very critical of 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 medicine and and all that those are the people at somerton manor that i believe uh this other stuff uh i think you know i've 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 did I've done my best. I'm going to be thinking about these need to know. I'm going to be thinking about these all of all of your questions because they're all extremely good questions when it comes to this movie. Um you've stumped me. And so for some of these you've stumped me. So when I said in my reply to your comment, I'm going to address all of these in my next video about eyes wide shut. They're awesome questions. They are awesome questions because they're not easy to answer. Those are my favorite kind. Um, <laughs> so, you know, and then we need to know writes back. Thank you. This is going to be good. I bought a brick of Bustelo coffee and I aim to put it to good use. You know what? I'm going to put that on my grocery list. I've never tried Bustelo coffee. I need to. Is it good? Do you like it? I think I've said that already in this um video but i need to try some of that next time i go to the grocery store which might be tomorrow or the day after i don't know but out of all your questions the one that i'm most confident about is the one where you ask who those people were at somerton manor it it doesn't matter who they were we will never know their identities you know we think we know who the richest people on planet earth are Oh, because you can look it up on the Google, right? I think I, I, I read somewhere in, in a book one time, a sociologist wrote, and again, this was years ago, and I can't remember the author or the title of the book, but it was a book about sociology. And the person wrote what the richest rich people on planet Earth and the poorest poor people on planet earth have in common is that they're completely anonymous we don't know who they are they're invisible to us you know those uh, those of us who are working class uh, that's me um middle class whatever you know um these hierarchies in our lives are designed to keep us in check um but the hierarchy that we don't see, you know, we don't, we can't even understand it because it's, I guess it's not for us to understand. And there's something wrong with that. Again, I'm trying to solve that problem or answer that question in every video that I make on this channel. That's why I'm hyper-focused on Stanley Kubrick, because I think he was trying to do that too. He was trying to figure out the origin or the source of that kind of power. Why does it exist period and in this movie he's trying to trying to um that's his ultimate question in eyes wide shut which you know i'll just focus on that movie because we're talking about that movie of, of stanley kubrick's eyes wide shut he wants to know he maybe doesn't even necessarily want to know who those people are he wants to know why they're there he wants to know why they're there and with regard to bill When he, you know, after he has his his argument with Alice and she tells him about the naval officer and everything, he gets called away uh, from her and he goes to the apartment of the of the wealthy man who died. And then after that, he goes on his adventure um, and it's an adventure that's fueled by anger, not lust. 
anger. He's very angry at Alice because she put him in his place. She put him in his place. She reminded him, first of all, she reminded him what his place was and to for him to stay in it. And that's what just infuriated him. And, and he went out looking for some action. Um, and for some reason, he isn't able to go through with it every single time. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because... Maybe it's because he is a doctor. Maybe because, I mean, doctors, they see the human body uh, differently than you and I do. They see it as a specimen. <laughs> That's why. Uh, you and me, we see the human body as maybe beautiful, maybe ugly, maybe something else. But a doctor just sees body parts and how they work together and, and you know, how to diagnose a disease or a condition. You know, allegedly, a lot of them end up committing suicide. Doctors, medical doctors. Either that or they turn to drugs and drink. So, you know, that's something to consider. But, um, thank you so much, Need to Know. You give me a great deal to think about. And that's always a good thing. Uh, Greg Gibson 33 says fyi you spelled hose wrong unless you're describing a garden gardening tool oh i love the spell checkers i love them need to know says nope that's how it's spelled <laughs> see thank you need to know i checked i checked of course i did um but thank you well, you know thank you uh, greg gibson for looking out for me and thank you need to know i appreciate it so much uh, Jacob Hope 6164 says, because it's an allegory of Hollywood, possibly, possibly that what we're looking at in this movie might very well be an allegory of Hollywood. Um, hmm, but we have to build on that though. It's an allegory of Hollywood, but how? And, and another interesting thing that you just made me think of, Jacob uh, Hope, is that he cast a husband and wife to play the roles of husband and wife in this movie just like he cast somebody named jack to play jack in the shining and somebody named danny to play danny in the shining he also yeah in this movie it's about a husband and wife and they cast a real life couple interesting uh thank you jacob hope uh, Richland Law says, in Straw Dogs, Sam Peckinpah accused of eliciting performance with abuse of Susan George. And there's a link here, 21 minutes forward. Okay, I'm going to have to look at that. Uh, are infinite multiple takes a form of abuse? Asks Shelley and Nicole. Uh, there are examples of insulting, slapping, spitting, threatening, lying, running from running the camera after take uh, throughout all the best films. Some say anything is permissible to get the performance or to get the shot. Remember, movies are the best entertainment. Ooh, wow. Hmm, Rich Linlaw. I think I know what you're driving at. <laughs> I think I know what you mean. Um, thank you. I I think I know exactly what you mean. Oof. Is he fighting fire with fire? Is that what you're saying, Richland Law? Or should I just leave it, you know, up in the air and, and not try to, like, uh, say any def anything definitive about what you, what your comment? It's it, what he, I don't know if you guys are picking up what Richland Law is putting down, but there's a lot going on in this comment, just like many of his comments. Uh, Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> Think about it. Something he's he's trying to say something that is not easy to say. So thank you, Thresh Law. I always appreciate it. And last but not least, uh, Torgo, 1969. Napoleon is known as the standard bearer of the ideal of meritocracy, or for that or for that we honor him and want to learn more about him the elements of meritocracy in the u.s are the reason that so many of us can get uh can get what and be where we deserve in this life 
Oh, Torgo. Torgo, 1969. Um, ooh. I, I don't know what to say to this comment. I would like to ask you a question, if I may. Uh, do you live in the United States? Because, you know, I'm not, I, I, this is no shade. I, I promise you this is no shade. You're right. Napoleon is the standard bearer of meritocracy. He absolutely is. Um, but the, fo uh, the, 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 the fact that you, what you put here, the, uh, the elements of meritocracy in the U.S. are the reason that so many of us can get what and be where we deserve in this life. I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, the U.S. is a case system like all the other ones. There is a class system, a case system in the U.S., just like in the, in the U.K., just like in India, just like everywhere else on planet Earth. And... The thing about the U.S. is that we're just better at pretending it doesn't exist. The, the, the system of nepotism, the system of uh, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And sometimes, you know, what, what's, the, what's the rest of that saying? The unofficial uh, remainder of that saying? It's not, who, it's not what you know, and it's not who you know, it's who you blow. Um, and that definitely applies to this movie. Uh, or, you, you know, it can be. It, it, it would take some doing, but it can be applied to this movie. Um, I don't believe that the U.S. is a meritocracy. If it were, the price of gasoline would not be as high as it is. If it were, there would be no homeless people. A lot of those people went to college. Um, you know, you do everything right in life. You pick a path and you do everything you're told to do. You work very hard. You go to school. You don't cheat. You don't lie. You, you're just, you know, the, the best you can possibly be. And you get, like, you 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 get treated badly in return that's what you get um and it only works if you come from a certain class in my own job the people who manage things they all seem to have gone to private schools i mean that's what i've noticed i went to a public school and like i said at the beginning of this video there's a very good chance that I'm going to be out of a job in a couple of months. And I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, I went to school. I worked hard. My professors, you know, my former professors look at my resume and, and, and they say, you know, why, why are you having such a hard time breaking through into what you want to do? Like, you're no slouch, Miss M. You, you, you've done pretty well. And I say, look, I don't know. I don't know. I, I did everything that I was told to do. Um, this is like hitting home for me. Your comment is hitting home for me quite a bit. I did everything that I was supposed to do. I was a good girl. And now, now what? What do I have to show for it? I'm worrying about whether or not I'm going to be employed after the new year. <sighs> you know, I don't believe that the U.S. is a meritocracy. And if by meritocracy you mean being born into a family with money that can afford a private elementary school, junior high school, high school, and college, and put you in those places where then you'll meet people who can help you later, if that's what you mean by meritocracy, okay, then, then, then it is a meritocracy. But other than that, no. There are schools. Uh, and this isn't just, I'm not addressing just Torgo here. I'm I'm addressing everybody. There are schools in my local area that are very well known for, like, if you go to that school, it doesn't matter whether or not you're a good student. After you graduate that, that school, after you graduate high school, going to that private school, you're going to get into college. You don't have to deserve to be there. You're just going to get that, you're going to be, you're going to go to college. 
because you went to that school. You could be the worst student ever, but if you went to that school, you will get accepted into some college, whether it's a public or private university, you're going to get in. And that's that. I mean, the Varsity Blues scandal. I don't know if you, um, you know, speaking of which, Matthew Modine played one of the coaches at USC that was involved in the Varsity Blues scandal from a couple years back. Um, you know, Matthew Modine played Private Joker in, in FMJ. So, you know, the, if, 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 if we ever had any, any illusions about whether or not this is a meritocracy, Varsity Blues should have just destroyed all of those illusions for us. Um, but I'm, I'm done with my, uh, comments for this video, Eyes Wide Shut Part 1. Why is there so much nudity, sex, and hoes in this movie? Now I'm going to, you know, finish this up and then upload this video. And I'm going to have to try and figure out how to work in the words sex, nudity, hoes, or something related in the title of this video so I can get how many views now? 1,500. Let me see. How many is it now? Hold on. Let me refresh this page. Oh, uh, 1,600. Since I started this video, it went from 1,500 to 1,600. What did y'all do? I, is it me or is it you? I don't know. Um, so let me know. <laughs> what, what did you do? But, um, that that I think that's all I have to say for this video and I have to work on a title I'm gonna reuse the Nicole Kidman thumbnail this is my this is the part two uh, it's a viewer mail but it's part two I'm gonna do all the eyes wide shut videos in in a series whether it's a viewer mail whether it's a coffee break whether it's an actual analysis um, of the movie or, or various parts of it it's all gonna be part one part two and so on and so forth that's I have decided so that's that you all Thank you for being here. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate them immensely. And that's that. So I'm going to reiterate my church announcements. I hope you enjoyed the coffee. And yes, I'm going to get um, a brick of Bustelo coffee. Need to know. And I'll let you know how I like it. It's going to be, I mean, it can't be that bad. It's coffee. So uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the coffee. I hope you enjoyed the video. Returning viewers, thank you for returning. New viewers, thank you for being new. Subscribers, thank you for subscribing. And all of you, no matter why you're here, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video if you know somebody who might enjoy it. And please don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I make one of these. Um, so that's it. That's that. And that's all. And I don't know what I'm going to do next time. Hopefully, Full Metal Jacket. We shall see. But until next time, until the next time when I find yet another reason to talk at you in one of these videos, I'm going to go ahead and bid you bye-bye. So, bye-bye, everybody.